Okay, so we have here Mark Steele, 5G activist, campaigner, weapon system expert, with Ingrid Dickinson, the founder of Bemery. So, um, Ingrid, would you mind introducing yourself for the camera? Just tell us briefly about your background, please. Yes, I founded Bremi a few years ago to look for an alternative to uh, microwave communication, which was, uh, you know, we were trying to concentrate or focus on uh, uh, visible light communication. That's and looking at alternatives to the dangerous, to, to the health effects of microwave communication. So Bemery uh, lo is looking at ways to uh, to find a, a biocompatible system. And uh, that's why we, we set up quite a few years ago, long before LiFi was known, we already were talking about visible light, VLC, visible light communication. And what does BEMRI stand for? Bioelectromagnetic Research Initiative. So okay. we're looking, we are, we are looking uh, for biocompatible communication systems. Okay. And there's been, you know, some chatter on the internet about uh, apparently Bem someone from Bemry went up to Gateshead and did a 5G survey. Do Bemry do surveys for we 5G? We don't do surveys and we don't authenticate surveys. We are, uh, it was a member, then a member, he's no longer a member, that it was a member of Bemry who actually does these uh, surveys privately for people who are electrosensitive. Um, he heard about 5G in Gateshead and he decided to go up there. Nothing to do with Bemery because he does that uh, on his own, on his own back, because he's got lots of measuring equipment and usually he goes into houses uh, uh, of people who are electrosensitive and gives them advice on how to shield themselves. But he was not advised by Bemery to go there, that was his own decision. And there was a claim um, that apparently Mark Steele had uh, bullied you uh, over the phone or changed to change your mind about this survey that was supposedly done by Bemery. Did you get any harassing calls from uh, Mark? No, in fact, I heard that Bemery, the name of Bemery was used to discount the fact that there was 5G in Gateshead. Now, I told this member, now not, no longer a member, uh, at the time that I didn't, that Bemery should not get involved because as long as somebody <clears throat> makes a fuss about 5G, we should be happy because uh, we are not that kind of platform. We are simply giving information about peer-reviewed evidence of, uh, you know, harm or uh, uh, interviews or, or, or articles in the, in the media. We are not that kind of platform that actually, um, you, you know, looks, does measurements. So I actually um, said to, when he phoned me and said he measured in Gateshead, I said, we'll stay right out of it. Um, whether there is 5G in Gateshead or not, does not really interest me because I know 5G is going to be rolled out. I mean, you'd have to be an idiot not to see it everywhere on the, you know, in the media. So 5G is, or as far as I'm concerned, I'm not really interested whether it's in Gateshead or not. I'm interested whether somebody is taking up the fight and say, look, there has been absolutely no research. So I actually, when I found out that the name of Bemery was used to actually discredit Mark Steele, I phoned Mark Steele and said, what's going on here? Um, and he told me that, he, he told me that uh, Bemery, our organization, basically made a statement that there is, that, that Mark Steele lied or is wrong. And I said, no, that's not the case. We are staying right out of it because we are not, we are not, um, uh, you know, taking measurements. So basically I said, I will put a disclaimer on Bemery site that we are not that kind of site. We are information only. Um, and actually to say that I was threatened is a plain lie. 5 G's in the streetlight. It was always in the streetlight. It was in the streetlight as an experimental test started in about 2013 in Gateshead and by 2016 I knew of it. The chap who we're talking about, David Webb, 
I'd actually specifically demanded to come to Gator to do a test. Now that to me was very, very suspicious. First and foremost, he was already being told that the that the sub gigahertz, the blanket coverage was 5G. He already knew that. He had the documents from Europe, which I'd already sent to him. He then came to measure a sub gigahertz frequency, the 868 to be precise, on the transmitters, which is specifically 5G. So we have a 5G piece of equipment, backhauling data, scanning people's homes, 3D mapping their homes, I've got the pictures. 5G has actually been reported in the mainstream media in the, in the light system. It's been reported in the mainstream media because as a matter of fact, that's where the micro cell for the 5G array is situated. It was experimented on in the, on the people at Gateshead. We had children die in the womb. I fought against 5G from day one. These people, the, re the reference things that they see in the papers, then they say that the stuff they see in the papers isn't correct. I mean, we had, we've been in court now five times. These individuals are stating it didn't happen. Now, why would the government, why would the government authorities give me a platform in a court case that's been blasted out internationally across the world if we're not trying to stop 5G? Can't understand why would the government give us a platform? Why would they? The reason why they give us a platform, the reason why they took me to court, because I made sure that they had no other choice but to take me to court. I forced Gator Council into a position, like because of my tenacious activities in the area, I forced them to take me into court, like right, where they had to embarrass themselves, where they brought experts to that court that couldn't show what they had in the light. And I proved in a court. It was 5G, and that's why the judge said the 5G risk must be debated because he could read in my skeleton argument what was actually in those lights. It was 5G, as now it's been attested. At the time, nobody knew that the 5G rollout was actually sub gigahertz and it was actually urban radar, an urban scanner. Nobody knew, but I knew because I knew it was battlefield interrogation equipment, and that's what 5G is. Forget about what you see in the mainstream media. People can't pick and choose what they're seeing in the mainstream media. What they have to do, do their own research. Go and have a look at the spec, the Ofcom specs, the European Union specs, or the FP7 funding for these technology companies, where they took this equipment to South Korea and tested it, looking at the jungle and target acquiring wild boar and shooting them with the same equipment. I know, because I've read the documents. So these people, if they want to investigate, Let's start investigating the truth and the reality of what's going on in Gateshead and around the rest of the country instead of trying to use their ability to try and discredit me from trying to fight against them. This same individual, her narrative and her website's been used on a number of occasions by the industry. The industry are showing it to people. They champion this particular person. So this person got nothing to do with trying to stop 5G because anybody that can't see that's actually been printed in mainstream that the, the street lighting actually has a 5G sub gigahertz transmitter. You only have to climb up one and take one off. Have a look at the hardware. Let's stop the lies. Let's stick to the truth, right? I don't need to go and threaten anybody about telling the truth. And Ingrid here is telling the truth in front of everybody, right? Nobody threatened anybody. All right, that's the truth. There you go. And just to add to that, it was in the Telegraph article about how the, the telecoms companies are fighting over, you know, getting 5G onto the streetlights. That was in the Telegraph about a month ago. And just to add another couple of things, um, you had, um, oh yeah, David Webb gave a talk in uh, Totnes about 5G and EMF, and he tested uh, Sue Webster's who I had on the, the MP <clears throat> video um, earlier when we had Sarah Wollaston. He tested her uh, electronic toothbrushes that give off, have Bluetooth. And he said, oh, you know, no microwaves giving, you know, coming off those. But we test them with the Acousticom. And the Acousticom, which, as we all know, measures microwaves, the Acoustometer 1 and 2, yeah. showed the microwaves. And I went up to Gateshead when I was there, the street lamp with the antenna on, that was giving off microwaves. And he said, no, it's not. 
and he was recommending some really expensive equipment uh, you know that we didn't have but you can measure it with these cheap acousticon meters that are just cost like 140 pounds they do measure microwave radiation mm -hmm. he's in denial of that and that, mm -hmm. that to me is extremely suspicious because it doesn't take anybody a great deal of research to actually go and have a look and find out that 5G the blanket coverage is as a matter of fact sub gig the backhaul backhaul is part of 5G the Harvard Technologies admit in 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 the <coughs> In that director's report of 2016, that equipment on the streetlights and gates it backholes, targets, acquires, and backholes everything in the urban environment. This is for everybody to see. Go and have a look. And since then, since then, good job we've got the documents and good job they were in the court and they're registered historically now in the court papers because that company's been pulled down. Ask yourself the question. Harvard Technology. Harvard Technology. Yeah. Why they pull that That's company right. down? Because what they're trying to do is bury the body. Yeah. Because that piece of equipment on the top of those lights is a yeah. target acquiring weapon system. And it is absolutely outrageous. And what's more outrageous is individuals who pretend to be 5G activists. And they're not. They're yeah. working for the state. And Barry's admitted that this all comes under the Official Secrets Act, rolling out this technology. So even if they say, oh, we're announcing it and, you know, we're going to install 5G in this town and people are believing it. Oh, they can't do it in that town because they haven't announced it yet. Rubbish. It comes under the Official Secrets Act and they're described, they're disguising the masts uh, in trees or, you know, making them look like trees. They can get away with anything. And we're talking about a trillion dollar industry here. Uh, so they've got all this money behind them. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we need to stick to the facts. And uh, just one quick question. Is uh, David Webb a member of Bemery uh, anymore? No or? longer. Okay. No. So he comes all the way to Gateshead to do a test and basically says the transmitters on the lights operating in sub gigahertz. Well, I already knew that. It's urban, it's urban long range radar. I already knew that. So why was he trying to tell us something I already knew? And it actually operates specifically the 868. And the 868 is specific for autonomous vehicles, 5G. 868 5G link up. It's got a dielectric lens that is supposedly to shoot a signal at an autonomous vehicle. However, it's not for that. It's to shoot you. That's how serious this issue is. All right. And that's why what we need to do is park these unfortunates, park these unfortunates off to one side. All right. And let's not even let's talk about it anymore. Because to be honest, it's just a distraction. Yeah. Thank you very much, folks. All right, and uh, Ingrid, you're going to see the 5G event tonight at yes, St. Mark's uh, yes. Church. Uh, yes, I'll What do you there. think about that? Yeah. Looking forward to it? I'm very concerned, especially also I'm concerned about uh, that the trees will be cut. The trees will be right. heavily pruned or cut. And my question is, where are the greens and where is Extinction Rebellion here? Where is Extinction Rebellion? Because we are looking at extinction. So why are they not even mentioning it? That's a really good well, question. Well, why the RSPC yeah, another one? I mean, chips, they're putting chips in your dogs and your cats and they're dying of cancer from the increase in microwave radiation in homes because it acts as an antenna inside the dog. So it actually increases oxidative stress around where the chip is. All right, that then leads to cancers. So your dogs and, your dogs and cats and pets are dying of cancer. Know about the RSPCA, they're out for lunch. The RSPB, out for lunch. Greenpeace, out for lunch. Liberty, out for lunch. Liberty did an article the other day about, uh, you know, about this, um, this facial recognition. Facial recognition, they're talking about privacy. Well, let's talk about the real issues. It causes cancer. They're scanning you with a class one cancer causing radiation to actually map your face. If you don't have protective eyewear, your local police force are trying to give you cancer. Now, I believe there's a serious issue there, not just a privacy issue, so why is Liberty not covering it? Why are any of these Amnesty International, the torture, children being tortured in school from Wi-Fi, neurological disorder, 70,000 children self-harming in schools from industrial grade Wi-Fi, where Public Health England, a criminal enterprise, turn around and say it's safe. Absolute garbage. The, the peer-reviewed, thousands of published, peer-reviewed, uncontested papers, uncontested, state that non-thermal microwave radiation causes neurological disorders, 
lots and lots of biological damage, DNA damage, etc., etc., etc. I could go on. There are thousands of them. So these dishonest organisations, public servants paid for by the people, out the lunch. Not only that, charities stop paying them. The Woodland Trust turned around and said the chopping down the trees got nothing to do with 5G. Amazing. How do they know? So the Woodland Trust have a script to send out to people to tell them that the chopping down the trees. Well, I've seen Surrey University's document and it actually shows quite clearly that all the trees have to come down under a metre, a couple of metres for 5G to have 100% uh, ability to look into your home. And the reason it needs that is because when those trees and those leaves get wet, the signal sometimes can get took to took the ground. But that's not what the real issue is. This is an EMP potential terrorist attack on this country. What's an EMP, Mark? Electromagnetic pulse weapon. As okay. what we saw in the test in, in, in Paradise, in California, anybody doesn't believe it, go and have a look at the aerial photographs. That's an EMP. That's what happens when I fill an environment with microwave radiation and then I overburden it with a, a pulse It'll take your house out. So anybody that thinks about trying to protect themselves, put something in the home, yes, you can mitigate microwave radiation, but you cannot stop the 5G weapon. This is a weapon system in all its technical parameters. And then just quickly about your glasses, Mark. What are those called? Because some people have asked about... Uh... These, are, these are an iridium coated. I mean, you can pick them up anywhere. Uh, I don't like to sort of advertise for people, but I've got these at TK Max. Uh, that Timberland, and the reason I like these ones is because the iridium coating doesn't rub off easily. The, that's the mirror, the metalized coating on these glasses, it, it helps to reflect back out the microwave radiation. But what's really important about these, all the LED street lights that are being put up recently are pretty toxic. They are lethal, by the way. It's the pulse modulation, but it's the fact that you don't have spectral balance. So you've got a blue phosphor coated LED, there's no spectral balance. Very, very very stressful to the retinal cells causes a lot of uh, damage and a lot of apoptosis in the cell that means death so we've got all the science that says that so ask yourself the question public health england have already warned councils around the country about the rollout of led streetlights and they are at pace rolling out the technology in breach of the 2012 social care act that says that the state have to protect you from non-ionizing and ionizing radiation and they run out the technology that they already know to be harmful ask yourself the question they have an agenda and we have to stop it we have to take these characters to court we've got to get involved we've got a, 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 a fund there where people need to get organized people need to get involved with it so that we have numbers when we take these characters into the courts, we have numbers who are all involved in it because they have broken the law. The laws of this country have been broken. We've actually got the evidence. Let's get them in there. And we've got a useful sticker that people can put on their streetlights. There's a lot of... So just, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. People, people need to start, you know, taking action locally, nationally, and we need to coalesce into groups so that we're not all start to try and take action against this crime that's been committed against us. 5G technology is untested, it's unproven untested, there's no safety data at all that shows that it's safe, there's no safety data, there's no absolute safety data at all, and that that's shows quite clearly, right, it's in breach of the Nuremberg Code, they're not allowed to experiment, use experimental technology on top of you, this is totally experimental, it's in breach of the Code, it's a human rights crime, it's an indictable offence, your council is committing a crime on you. Your local authorities are committing crimes on you. That technology has never been tested, it's not proven, and it's proven in, in laboratory tests and in the published, peer-reviewed, uncontested papers, it's harmful. So ask yourself the question, why? We need to take action, we need to take action now.